Hey everybody, this is my first ever live. Ooh, ooh. I am popping on here for my first ever live to um, answer some questions that I got. I got them written down um, of some about me stuff. So thank you for joining me for those of you who are joining me. Um, if you are new to my channel, uh, welcome here. If you um, are not subscribed, feel free to subscribe if you like content about like mental health, mental wellness, um, life hacks, stuff about being a mommy, um, stuff about social anxiety. I just posted a social anxiety um, episode today. So um, just lots of life hacks and real life and how to get through real life and um, all that good stuff. So I will um, go ahead and find the filter that I feel like <laughs> suits my skin tone best today. Not that one! Uh, let's see. Let's see. This me, 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 me. I'll just go, I'll just go with me, guys. I'll just go with me. Ain't nobody need a filter. You got me. Okay, so let's start with my questions. Also, comment if you have questions for me that you want me to answer. Just quickly, a little bit about myself. As you can see, I'm not in my normal um, location. I am at a motel for a event for the military. Um, I'm a licensed mental health therapist. I mostly see teenagers and adults in my practice. And um, I got two kids and a husband. And that's kind of it for now. I will move on to the questions. Okay, so here we go. Okay, first one, do you cry in public? Yes. <laughs> yes, I cry in public. I'm a crier, guys. If you haven't seen my video on, it's titled something like, um, I cried during my therapy session or something. I'm a crier. Um, not like a boo-hoo-hoo -hoo crier, not like a I can't control myself crier, but um, if I hear something really sad, especially um, from somebody who I really care about, um, I do get emotional because those feelings of knowing their hurt and despair really affect me. Um, another time I cry is when I see a big change in somebody. So if I am working with somebody, oftentimes in therapy, and there's been something we've been working on for a long time, like lots of times like a shift in thinking, and I see that shift in thinking happen, I am like, holla! <laughs> I cry, guys. Like, I get teary-eyed. And so if there's any mental health therapists on here, how I handle that if you will is that um I talk about it so um of course I would never like get in the middle of somebody's story but just recognize and call out like hey you know what I have tears in my eyes your story is so moving and you are so strong or you know what I got tears in my eyes because I am just so proud of you so good job being a rock star so yes I cry in public guys I'm a crier it's part of me what is your biggest fear okay um I have some fears that become irrational sometimes um and so lots of work of managing them but one of my irrational fears is driving in taxi cabs um so like i said i'm in the military so i travel sometimes and um to be in a taxi cab with a driver that i don't know going somewhere that i don't know where that is is like extremely vulnerable to me and so I do get nervous. I am one of those people that like straight up like call a YouTube or a, not a YouTube, an Uber. And I will like click the person's profile. And if they don't look legit, I will cancel my ride. <laughs> um, number two, things that I'm scared of. So I live in North Dakota. And the bummer of North Dakota is it gets freezing. Like right now it's like, I don't know. I'm not there right now. I'm at a training and somewhere warm. But um it's probably somewhere around like negative 10 right now. So wah, 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 that's a bummer. But do you wanna know what is really good about the cold? Is big bugs, big reptiles don't exist. So we have spiders, but our spiders are like the size of my pinky at best. We don't have like huge tarantula, anaconda, snakes, like we got none of that big stuff. So we have, we have snakes sometimes, I've seen one in my life in North Dakota, and it was a tiny, tiny snake in a garden. 
So um, when I'm places warm, like where I am now, I like legit check my shoes. I turn on lights before I get out of bed. Like I get a little bit scared of the big icky animals. So the other night I was sleeping while I was trying to fall asleep and I was legitimately scared that um, a snake was going <laughs> to come and size me up. So my dad told me a story about a snake laying beside a person and like sizing them up. So I was like, <laughs> terrified that this was going to happen to me. So <laughs> there we go. Two fears. Um, what is something that you're learning? All right. So um, I have two things that come like immediately to mind of what I'm learning. One is how to use Instagram. Yes, friends, I just began learning like three weeks ago how to use Instagram. Is that even how you say it? How to Instagram? How to use Instagram? I don't know yet, the lingo isn't down, but go ahead and comment in here if there's a lingo I should be using. So um, anybody who's not following me on Instagram or didn't know I was on Instagram, it's because I haven't been on Instagram, so there's that. Um, the second thing I'm learning is how to narrate audiobooks. And um, that has been interesting and actually super, super fun for me. Um, and I just actually am about to release, no, okay, you guys, like three people know this, a close friend, my husband, and the person that was involved in completing this. So this is new news to everybody. Um, so congratulations if you're watching this because you are the first to know. But um, I actually just finished writing a book that I am going to put in ebook format. I'm nervous telling you guys this, that I'm going to put in ebook format and I also um, am going to narrate it myself in audiobook format. And it is about how to narrate audiobooks. So it's called Narrating Audiobooks, Everything You Need to Know. And um, so that's exciting. I don't really know how long the process will take because this is my first time ever writing anything. It's a very short book. Um, it's my first, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But something I'm learning, there you go. Instagram and writing audiobooks, or um, doing narrating audiobooks, and I just wrote my first book. So maybe someday you guys, hey, thanks, Brooke. Maybe someday you guys I'll write like legit good books to help people through life. So I'm gonna sit up a little bit because I feel like I'm staring up at the camera. All right, moving on. Greatest quality, okay. <laughs> So sometimes our greatest weaknesses are our greatest strengths and I would say that probably the quality that pops out about me and people that know me get this vibe right away is I'm highly impulsive. And so I think when we hear the word impulsive we automatically think negatively because of course my impulsiveness makes me like forget my keys a lot. It makes me sometimes say things that I'm like, oop I wish I wouldn't have said that. Um, it makes me do some of those things that weren't well thought through so I might regret. But honestly guys, my impulsiveness has been super helpful to me in ways as well to where I'm not like overthinking what I'm doing. I just get on and do it. Like today, I was not planning to do a live. I legit sat down to record a video about me and I was like, hmm, let's just try a live. And so of course I was nervous and my heart was beating, but being impulsive, you don't sit in that for long. And so I would say that's probably the greatest quality that I can come up with in myself. Have I ever laughed at the wrong moment? Well, turns out I have. So, I have a nervous laugh, which doesn't suit somebody well that's in the military. So, um, when I was at basic training, I very specifically remember on the first day getting yelled at, because I was at basic training, um, and I laughed because I was freaking nervous, you guys. Like, it is scary <laughs> to get yelled at. And um, my instructor, we call them TIs, training instructor, told me like I was the first person who was going to make sure I got kicked out of the military because I think he thought I was actually laughing at him, which can be highly disrespectful, but I wasn't. It was just a nervousness. So someday I'll do a video on nervous laughs because I have had to do a lot of work to try and get past and work through my nervous laugh and really recognize like where it comes from and stems from. So um, yes, I've laughed at the wrong moment. That's not clearly the first time in life that I've laughed at the wrong moment so um next question do you like coffee <laughs> I give that look because um I love coffee you guys uh skinny ice caramel macchiato with soy milk from Starbucks Mwah, my fave my worst injury so this is a little bit embarrassing <laughs> Um, so good. I've never really had a super terrible injury. 
Um, but I'm not very athletic. I like to pretend like I was athletic in high school. Um, I'm not, though. But I played basketball, which I'm really good at granny shots. But ain't nobody got time for granny shots when you're playing basketball. Um, and the ball was thrown to me and I went to catch it and it like hit me like that and my um, knuckle snapped and broke. I thought I was going to pass out, so there's my pain tolerance. Nothing! Um, this is an odd one. When do you go to sleep? <laughs> but okay, I'll answer it. But that's a little odd to ask. But okay, we'll go there. So, um, I have two little kids. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And, um, my four-year-old stays up until, like, 9.30 to 10 o'clock at night. And you know what? I don't care about the, the hate is gonna hate. I don't care. I'm straight up cool with my daughter staying up until 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. Um, because it's like our snuggle time and we chill together. Um, so, I would say on a really rare occasion where I feel like I'm on a legit vacation, um, 9 o'clock. On an average night, 10 o'clock. And on a tough night, like last night I stayed up really late just because I was in the groove, midnight. But I woke up this morning thinking I was going to die. So, there's that. <laughs> I can't believe this was even a question. It's legit a question, you guys. Um, but I'm cool with answering just about anything, so we'll go with it. When is the last time I wet my pants? Um, I very vividly remember the last time I wet my pants. I'm not sure that everybody remembers this so vividly, but we'll go here. Um, I will just tell you the age first. I was in sixth grade, so I was 12? 12 12-ish, I believe. And this was back when like those VTEX came out, like those VTEX computers. Guys, they weren't real computers, they were battery operated, like kid computers. But it was right around Christmas time and we were at Target and um, my parents were like allowing me to look at them, which to me meant there was a possibility I might actually get this for Christmas. And I did not want to leave the aisle because I wanted to figure out which one I wanted so I could tell my parents. Well, I peed my pants. I knew I had to go pee. I tried so bad to hold it in. And then I remember like holding it in and then like, like crouching down and then like getting up and looking again and then like crouching down to hold it and getting up and looking again. Um, and eventually, clearly, I peed my pants. <laughs> and I will never forget, it was winter in North Dakota, obviously, and um, I remember my dad saying to me as we were walking outside, honey, it's going to be cold out here. And I remember thinking, like, is my pee going to freeze my pants to my legs? And where am I going to sit when we get to the truck? So, um, super vivid memory of me. Um, so, yeah, last time I wet my pants, of course, I was 12. Beer or wine? I actually don't drink, so I have drank many times. I have um, done a little... A decent amount of stupid things while drinking. Um, I don't feel like I've ever used drinking to numb before. If you guys can hear um, an ambulance, there is an ambulance coming by, a fire truck. It's almost gone. Um, I don't feel like I've ever used alcohol to numb, so it's not like a, when I say that I feel like people right away think recovery, which is cool. I'm in recovery for like a lot of things, like laughing at inappropriate times, but um, drinking has never been a coping mechanism for me, but I legitimately don't like how I feel when I drink alcohol. I don't like that feeling of like not having control or that feeling of worry that I get of um, like what could happen to me or if I'm making sound decisions. So um, I just don't drink. The last time I drank, my daughter was um, six weeks old. She's uh, four and a half now. And um, we were at a wedding and it was just uh, a heck of a night, guys. Like, it was, uh, m my husband tore his ACL. Um, I was vomiting on the side of the road. And um, my husband had to, like, lift me back in the car. It was ridiculous. With a torn ACL. We didn't know it was torn at the time. Um, and then I had to parent the next day. Like, what? <laughs> no! 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 Um, and I don't even like the taste of alcohol. So, um, beer, wine, neither, please. I'll take, like, uh, some pop, I'll take some water, I'll take some tea, any of that stuff. I just don't drink, guys. So, it's been, um, about four and a half, four and a half years, about, since I've drank. Okay, um, what's next? Can you close your eyes and raise your eyebrows? <laughs> well, I must try it, right? I mean, it says I need to try it, so I'll try it. Okay, ready? Close my eyes. I'm pretty certain I'm doing it. So I'm gonna say, yes, I can close my eyes and raise my eyebrows. 
Um, do you have a catchphrase? Yes, I do. So some of you that have been with me for a while know that I um, do like a word of the year and you'll have to check out my video if you haven't seen this um, because I've gotten a lot of really, 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 really fabulous feedback on people doing this and how much it's already helped them this year. But um, so watch that video and I tell you my um, word of the year in that video as well. And there's a lot of explanation that goes into why I chose that word. So I feel like I'd be doing everybody a disservice if I just blurted out what that word is. Um, and I've already been on here for 15 minutes, so I'm assuming people probably don't want to sit on here for another um, five minutes. This is my last question while I explain that. So go ahead and check out my video. Um, it's called something along the lines of um, pick a word, not a resolution for 2019. Um, but so a catchphrase. I do have a catchphrase and this has kind of been um, probably my catchphrase for almost a year now because I have plans to do, um, this upcoming year is just a big year for me in like really trying to attain some goals and get myself out there. As you guys know, I started this YouTube channel. Um, I'm opening my own private practice. And so um, my catchphrase for the year is stay humble and hustle hard. And I tell myself that a lot, especially when I'm in situations where I feel like my ego is, um, getting the best of me the reminder of like continue hustling you're doing great things but don't forget to stay humble so that's where i'm at um if you guys have any other questions for me feel free to um comment them below for those of you that have sat on this live thank you thank you um my first live and um i'm still alive so thank you guys for sitting with me have a fantastic day and i will see you soon Bye bye